And welcome back to the Digital Education Station, everybody. I am Ryan Fran, Chief Communications Officer for the Arcadia Unified School District, and very pleased to be joined by our special guest from Alt School, Ben Cornell, VP, make sure I get this correct, of growth. That wasn't too hard. Welcome to the Digital Education Station. We appreciate you being for here. Me. So this is our actually our seventh video strictly on personalized learning. I'm a fan, I'm a fan. Awesome, we, uh, we had the playlist and everything. Mm -hmm. Usually it's uh, Dr. Van Asdal or Dr. Wilson here, but you were here in the area today. We asked you, begged you, pleaded to get you here to stop by. I don't do autographs, but I'll do this interview. We appreciate it. We'll take what we can get. <laughs> so we've been doing, obviously, a lot of these videos to get information out. We have a, a web page on our district website where people can come for information, infographics, all these videos. Um, so we've talked to a lot of to our staff and our district leadership um, about personalized learning, the alt school platform, but we figured let's talk to somebody from alt school about what the platform is, what we're doing here with the lab school. So thank you so much for being here. First of all, we, we really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. So first, just give us a little background. Um, a lot of people obviously know about alt school, uh, but maybe some of our parents and students aren't too familiar with them. You guys have been in the news, you're a big deal. Um, but kind of tell us the, how Alt School came to be mm -hmm. and uh, where you guys are at kind of now. Yeah, so Alt School started four years ago. Um, Max Ventilla, our founder, was a, a senior leader at Google. And um, the founding team had been solving humanity-sized problems at Google. Mm -hmm. And over a billion people use right. Google search every day. And they cast their eye on education in part because they had kids themselves. And they said, We've, we've been doing so many amazing things with technology and all of these other sectors. Why does education still seem st stuck in a model that's 100 years old? Mm -hmm. And in many ways, we need to prepare students for 100 years from now. Yeah. So we're 200 years behind. So they started Alt School, and instead of starting with the system or the big picture, they started with the student. So it was 10 students um, in a warehouse uh, space in San Francisco. Max's daughter was one of the first students. And Alt School grew from there. And I think the reason why our technology platform, our school system is so unique is we built the system by starting with the student and growing out. And that's really what personalized learning is, is every day starting with the student at the center of learning, having that student drive the learning, their needs drive the learning, and helping them achieve their true potential. Today we have four lab schools, two in San Francisco, uh, two in New York City. Those lab schools are really our, um, our hub for developing our technology. But about a year and a half ago, we decided we wanted to invest in transforming all of education for all, of ki all kids. Mm -hmm. And doing that required partnerships. And that's when we found out about the amazing work of Arcadia students, educators, um, leaders. And um, from that conversation kind of sparked this idea of the Arcadia Lab School. And so here we are, kind of a weekend. Um, this is this and Menlo Park um, in Silicon Valley. These are the two first school districts we've ever partnered with. Oh. And um, it's been an incredible experience. We're kind of learning together, uh, bringing our skill sets and experiences together to make something special happen for those learners. One of our goals with the Digital Education Station, our vlog here, is to kind of get out to people, because it's a little bit new in our community. I mean, we've all, teachers and educators, as you know, have been doing personalized learning for years. It's just been called different things. So the term's a little new yeah. to people. We're all trying to find our students' passions and connect with them. It's Everyone has that in common. Um, so we've been trying to explain how we use personalized learning here, how it's already been used, and wh where we're going in the future. But the term itself is relatively new. How do you guys at Alt School define personalized learning? What is that? I totally get it. You know, whole child learning, <laughs> blended learning, um, uh, competency-based learning. There's a lot of buzzwords around it, and it it really starts with understanding where a student is, um, planning, engaging learning experiences for them, um, enabling those experiencing uh, experiences assessing those experiencing uh, experiences and then understanding where they are today and what that requires personalization at its core is meeting a student where they're at to take them where they want to go and so there's an element of the students in control 
they're trying to achieve their potential, they're articulating their vision, and there's an element of educators as experts understanding how to shepherd that student through a learning journey that prepares them for the world. So, um, you know, just start at this at the student. I'm a parent, I have a one and a half year old and a five year old. Really, personalized learning is what I do at home when I'm sitting next to my one and a half year old. There is no better agent <laughs> of his own learning than my son, Sebastian. So um, I would just say to the parents out there, take away all the complexity of it. It's really starting with your child, what is best for them in their learning journey. Here's one of the, my concerns I had when I was first learning about personalized learning and some of the concerns we get at parent meetings is everything is adapted to what the kid wants. So if I'm Johnny, I'm in seventh grade, I'm in our new lab school, and I don't wanna give an oral presentation on the Civil War, I'm just gonna write a paper and I'm never doing an oral presentation. How does personalized learning ensure you're meeting the student needs, but Johnny, you need to be able to get up in front of the class and give yeah. those oral presentations? That's right. That's a great question. And um, self-directed learning, there's something uh, scary about that because what happens if there's a real gap if a student doesn't want to to learn in this area or that mm -hmm. area and so we're really using a competency-based framework that competency-based framework is what are the skills not just what do kids need to know but what do they need to be able to do to be ready to succeed in the world and so we've anchored our platform and and arcadia is anchored around common core standards developed in um, collaboration with the state of New Hampshire, great thought leaders around what do kids need to know and do to be prepared for 21st century and 22nd century um, wor the world. So, so much about this though, I, I would just also say, is not about memorizing facts. We have more information at the click of, uh, of a mouse with Google than we've had in entire human history. It's really around kids having the skills to be lifelong learners, to be adaptive. And so that's why, you know, the A plus on your test of two times two or memorizing the tables, that is a little bit more de-emphasized. Those, those, those nuggets of knowledge are important, but only important in, in so that people can construct skills and construct their own long-term understanding of those concepts. So I would just say, um, parents out there, if you're struggling to, to engage and support your student, ask the student, what are they working on? Where are they succeeding and where are they struggling? Oftentimes they have a great sense across that competency bandwidth of where they're a superstar and where they need more support. What have you guys learned so far now being your fourth year going into your fifth year of this journey, starting from scratch, brilliant minds from Google, some of the best yeah. engineers in the world. Um, some of you guys are new to education, but then you have some people on your team that have been in education their whole lives. What have you learned so far in your journey um, from where you started to where you are now? I think the big thing that we've learned is that technology is not a silver, silver bullet. Ultimately, you've got to start with a vision of learning for students. You've got to have great culture. You've got to have great educators and pedagogy and practice. Technology is third. It supports and amplifies the great work that educators are doing to support student learning. I, I think the thing that scares me the most is that in some regards, we're heading towards a call center classroom future in some technology-enabled school environments. We believe the fundamental op opposite, and I think we share that with Arcadia, that really uh, personalized dynamic learning is not in front of a screen 24-7. It's the real world projects that students are doing in meaningful ways, enabled by and facilitated by technology so that it's pushing them to be their best. And that's one of the misperceptions uh, that we kind of fight is people think, put your kid in front of the computer and that's personalized learning and that may be somebody's definition, but that I know we are on the same page with that. That's not, like you said, technology is a piece, it's in the background, it helps and supports, but it's not child technology, personalized learning. Yeah, so like when you have your cell phone, um, you're navigating the real world. Let's say you're using it to, as a map to get from one place to the other, or you're using it for your schedule. You're not glued to your cell phone all the time. And when we have family members, and maybe, maybe you are too, Ryan, um, when you're glued to the cell phone, we know that that's unhealthy. And people become too technology-centric. So 
Um, I think one thing that we have to trust is our educators to understand when do we bring technology tools to bear and when do we create real world um, experiences and only use the technology to adapt or document. Um, I would just say like it's a struggle all of us go through and our kids are going to struggle with living in a technology centric world but ultimately um, this model really puts the student at the center not the technology. A lot of people in the education world on a national landscape know who Alt School is. You guys have a big name founder with Max and you guys, some of the people you brought in. So a lot of people want to be partner with you, but when you're starting out, you're selecting who you partner with. Um, so why partner with Arcadia? Why are we such a good fit for each other, yeah. us, you, and vice versa? Yeah, um, when we first announced our partner program, we had 300 applications for four slots. Wow. Um, we've had incredible inbound interest. And um, I, I would also say we're humbled enough and honored enough to say there are countless schools and districts and educators that are really changing what's possible for kids out there. Our reason for selecting Arcadia is really having so many of the elements in place to really take education to that next level and personalize it um, in partnership with educators. And what we want to do is build a toolkit that amplifies that educator's impact. Um, we're not done with our journey to build that toolkit. And so we needed an organization that has an orientation towards fail forward and towards experimentation and iteration and towards trust and towards community building. So the vision was here. The culture and the schools, it's incredibly collaborative. It's incredibly student oriented. The pedagogy is incredibly strong. The outcomes are incredible. Um, but that, that real thing that got us over the hump was we kind of adopted a core value of think like a startup. And so you'll see that in our lab school. You'll see that with the First Avenue team. I think you'll see that in every school at Arcadia is each teacher is the owner and entrepreneur of his or her classroom. That's what really sparked the, the interest for us. And so when we say it's a partnership, it truly is. Our engineers are down here understanding what the needs are of educators and building on our platform to make sure that it's not just working for that teacher, but for all teachers. And by 2020, we believe that this partnership along with a few select other partnerships in our portfolio, will set us up to be a comprehensive, flexible platform that enables all kids to learn uh, according to their needs, their interests, and according to their competencies across the country. So we're building something really special, um, but I also have to just say, um, Arcadia, this is not a new thing. This has been going on for several years here, and that's why we picked you. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate that. So, Ben, what is, we all hear about the platform, all these great engineers working on it closely with educators and in collaboration, but what does the platform do? If I'm a parent, I'm figuring out how is this different than a, another system or platform my school or teacher has used in the past, what does the alt school platform do? Yeah. Well, there's really five things an educator needs to do. I need to understand where my students are. I need to engage them in deep learning experiences, and I need to assess um, how, their, uh, how that learning is, um, experience has improved their quality, and then I need to plan the next activity for them. I also need to collaborate, and that collaboration can be with my fellow teachers, it could be with the student themselves, and of course it's with parents. And so those are the five things that our platform does. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the ability for educators here that's different though is instead of us mandating or prescribing here's what you have to do at each of those stages we really put the educator in the driver's seat to kind of shape or design that curriculum and when it's really powerful is actually when students are in the driver's seat so I as a student understand where I am I plan my own learning experiences in collaboration with the teacher I engage in that learning and I self and peer assess to gain greater understanding all the while collaborating. So if you just remember, understand, plan, engage, uh, assess, and collaborate, those are the five things. And one of the things why we're excited to partner with Alt School is because one of those key terms you just mentioned is the collaboration. A lot of times in education, 
whether it's a textbook or another company or vendor, you get the product, thank you. We'll see you in five years when you need to renew. But we're working together. We're helping you, you're helping us um, figure out the platform and how it works best for our students. A lot of people don't know the support that goes into it. It's not like we partnered with you, let's sign, hey, have a great day, yeah, good, good luck, luck with everything. What is yeah. the relationship and the support how does that continue and what does that look like um, when you're working with us? Yeah, so at Old School we have a team of 150 people and they're um, a mix of engineers, primarily from Google, but from Facebook and you know the kind of who's who of technology. Um, about a third of those folks are um, lifelong educators. People who've been teaching in the classroom, both in public and private schools, people who've been doing uh, project-based experiential learning, people who've been doing um, more traditional um, education. And then um, about a third are support people. And so across that group, there's folks that are developing things centrally, and that support team is really taking those centrally developed products from the technology team and pedagogy and practices from the educators, and that support team is translating that to here. So part of my joy is I get to work with world-class um, support providers, many of whom you may have met or seen at, at different events, but the old school team is really um, thinking that um, it's about an embedded deep partnership and not about a transaction. I also would just say um, you're getting a kind of world-class technology company, we're getting a world-class school district. So in some ways part of what's so aligned here is that we've just added so much value to each other. Um, with that said, um, ultimately, um, what this partnership looks like will change. And today it's new and innovative, it's in the lab school, um, but I will also say as we start um, seeing more and more teachers adopting this and using this, a big part of our role will actually switch to elevating their voices, showing what they're doing that's working, because um, what I've just found is the collaborative uh, spirit within Arcadia itself is incredibly strong. So right now we're coming in, we're the experts on a lot of the things, but soon you'll see it's your own team, your own educators that are really your in-house experts that you can go to and, and transform the learning for all kids. I've been so impressed with our teachers. I'm glad you mentioned them because I, I'm not a traditional educator. I do a little education stuff, but I, I don't have, I haven't been in a classroom full time. It's fascinating for me to witness go down the classroom or just watch on Twitter, some of their ability and creativity to engage kids. And Greg Gazanian, our chief uh, strategy and innovation officer was just talking about a second day of our lab school. And one of the kids, it's, all right guys, lunchtime. And the kids would not leave for lunch because they were so enthralled and engaged in what they were doing. Mm -hmm. It is amazing, but it's the teachers that are helping provide those lessons, coming up with creative ways. And that's what everybody wants. Parents, teachers, everybody is get kids interested and in not wanting to leave the classroom. What are some of the things that you've seen, because you've visited a ton of our classrooms. I've been so impressed with how our teachers have that ability to connect with those kids and engage them in learning. What are some of the things that you've seen Yeah. Uh, from that perspective, you know, and part of my job is to travel the country, you know, with the 300 schools that applied, but also um, learning from the most innovative models that are out there. Um, when the team asked me what's the analogy I would use to describe the old school platform, I said, "Well, the teacher really is the superhero. Mm -hmm. The teacher's like Batman, and we're the utility belt. Yeah. And Batman doesn't use the all things on the utility belt all the time." Batman uses the one that's right for that situation. So it's the bat grappling hook or the bat beacon or the car or whatever. Um, the schools here are filled with education superheroes. Um, I was in a classroom where um, every student was out of their chair, going around the wall, doing math problems dynamically, commenting on each other's math problem. And I thought for a second, am I in a, a public school or am I at like a Google or Facebook? Am I at like a, a leading think tank? I think that the dynamic, um, the dynamic nature of our world today is somewhat daunting for, for us as parents 
Um, but kids embrace it. And I find that the educators here have embraced that dynam dynamism with their kids and have allowed them to really own the, the learning journey. So um, you won't see rows of students facing forward with the master of knowledge in front of the classroom. Um, that's the old model. Um, what you will see is engaged, active, questioning, curious, active students in their own learning with a rigor that's not just ready for college, but it's ready for life. Um, I also just want to give a shout out too to the administrators. Um, I think it takes something special for a school leader to have the humility to empower their staff to lead. And to, to a one, I think each school leader that I've met has really been about giving their teachers a, a, a huge voice in their vision and architecture of their school. And, um, you know, I've been in a lot of schools and when you have innovation, sometimes there's that manic genius mm -hmm. who's kind of architected the whole thing and it, it um, replicates our heroic leader kind of paradigm. Not so here. I think it's a servant leader uh, paradigm. And so, so much of what we're talking about today has just been uh, uh, allowed and encouraged um, from the leadership to kind of grow bottoms up. And so that's the, you know, the dynamic classrooms, really engaged students, and ultimately inspirational, um, effective, and dynamic teachers. Yeah, That's what I saw. Our teachers, our principals, our leader, district leaders are just amazing, and they allow... You're a lucky guy, Ryan. Yeah, I'm very lucky. I have, <laughs> I have the best job in the district. I tell people that all the time, and I am a lucky, lucky person. My job is to share the story of the district, and it's such That's a right. great story to share. So last question for you. The So you guys are... Four years in, what's the plan, the future for all school? Yeah, so um, transforming education, that's a pretty um, daunting task. Lots it's a moonshot. Yeah. Um, and, it, you know, for each journey, you know, a thousand mile journey, it starts with a step, right? Um, one thing that I would just say is the industrial system. That is, that's what we use to describe the, the common educational model. That model was based on manufacturing which was that we have inputs and outputs and a student sits there, we fill them with knowledge and then their output to go produce something. And in a static world where things aren't changing, where production is the value of society, that's the right model. And for, from World War II to you know, the late 60s, early 70s, we were the best at it in the world. What I, what I strongly believe, and I think anyone who has a, a kindergartner or first grader like, or, or one year old like I have, um, sometimes that industrial model snuffs out the fire of uh, creativity, curiosity, imagination, and learning. And by middle school and high school, we get people who are great with compliance to the system, but they're not no longer agents of their own learning. And in our world and our economy now, that's not, not creating the kind of uh, leaders and workers that we need to to take our society to newer heights at greater heights so um, our strategy is instead of trying to work with those big huge systems there's one in the area that I'm sure you all know about huge and amazingly large and complex systems they're really hard to disrupt that industrial system and so a lot of folks are focused on changing those systems and doing incremental change we just believe incremental change is not going to get us there. So we are working with the leading um, districts and schools that are on the front edge, places like Arcadia, that are in that 5% that have figured out how to reach new levels of quality with um, engaged and um, you know, empowered students. And from there, your team, your staff, our, our team, we will figure out what works. We will have the curriculum, we'll have the content, we'll have the, the strategies, and we'll figure that out together in deep partnership. And from there, from that island of the future, we'll, we'll build a bridge back to the mainland where our industrial systems are today. And that will give them the path that it will be less scary for them to take that leap or to take that next step on their journey to really move towards a student-centered vision. So. Um, it's a long journey, and I would say we have no doubt that um, it's a Herculean task, 
but with the educators, with the students and families of Arcadia as our partners, we feel like it's only a matter of time before we succeed. Ben Cornell, VP of Growth from All School. Thanks so much for stopping by the Digital Education Station. It's been a pleasure. We really appreciate the time and information. Uh, it's been great insights into All School and giving us a different perspective on personalized learning and the All School platform. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arcadia. It's been awesome. And for more of the other personalized learning videos, you can check out AUSD.net. Check out the Personalized Learning tab. Plenty of videos and information there that we've done here at the Digital Education Station in our vlog. So check out there for more information. Thanks everyone. We'll see you the next time on the AUSD Digital Education Station.